In this video, I will show you how to use the CalcMet 14 identification tool. Firstly, I will present you what the identification tool is and when to use it. Then I will go through the settings, the identification tool search, and how to interpret the results. The identification tool is a powerful analysis tool that you can use to identify unknown compounds from your sample. We have two different libraries that you can use with the identification tool. Our own identification tool application library with over 400 components and the NIST library with more than 4,000 components. So you want to use the identification tool when you suspect that there might be an unknown component in your sample. One indication of an unknown component can be a residual alarm. The residual alarm is indicated by red color in the residual column. Yellow indicates residual warning. In CalcMet Easy, you can also see alarm in the bottom banner. And when you click it, it tells you that there is a high residual alarm and a high residual warning. Then you can also check the residual spectrum. And in this residual spectrum, you can see that there are some additional peaks. So that is a good indication that there might be an unknown component. In comparison, this is what a normal residual spectrum should look like. You can see some water signal and some CO2 signal in there, but there are no clear peaks in the sample. Next, to use the identification tool, we will open the identification tool application library. Go to options and application, then click browse and go to the identification tool library folder and select the identification tool application. Don't save your settings on the original identification tool application library, but instead create a new library and rename it. All right, now we have opened the identification tool library and now we have only two active components in the analysis, water vapor and carbon dioxide. This is a good starting point. In the case that you, you know for sure that you have some other components, you can also go ahead and add them at this point from analysis settings and check the boxes for the for the components that you want to include in the analysis. However, water vapor and carbon dioxide are, are also a good starting point. Next, we can configure the identification tool settings. So we go to options and identification tool. First, you have to choose if you want to perform the identification on the sample spectrum or the residual spectrum. So this is the sample spectrum and this is the residual spectrum. The residual spectrum is usually a good place to start. But if you don't see clear peaks here, you can use the sample spectrum. Then you have to choose the identification method. There are two different methods that you can use. Residual of CLS and peak match. Residual of CLS is a good option if you are not sure if you have multiple unknowns or just one unknown, because this method fits different combinations of reference spectra to the sample spectrum or residual spectrum. Um, if you are pretty sure that there is only one unknown component or you want to verify your suspect suspicions, um, you can use peak match. Peak match just compares individual reference spectra to the selected spectrum, so sample spectrum or residual spectrum. Next, you have to select the areas of the spectrum you are searching for. Now we have all the areas listed here selected. You can deselect an area 
just by clicking it and select it again by clicking it. And then you can also modify the spectral areas as you wish. Now we have peaks around here, the 3000 area, and then here around 1000. We can now select all the areas and, and see how it how the results turn out. Uh, next, you have to choose the limit heat quality index. This represents the quality of your results. The higher the heat quality index is, the better the result. So that means that at the moment we have here that the limit heat quality index is 60%. So all results with the heat quality index below 60% will not be included to the results at all. A good starting point here is 85%. You can first try with 85% and if you don't get any results, you can decrease it until you get results. Next, you can choose whether you are searching for the NIST library as well, or just from the Gosmet identification tool application library. It's recommended that you first start with the Gosmet identification tool application library, and only if you don't get any results with that, then you will try the NIST library. Then you can also check if you want to filter results with false absorption peaks. Sometimes identification tool will give components to the results that have a high heat quality index on the included ranges, but they have absorption peaks which exceed the absorption of the defined spectrum outside these, these areas. So this means in practice that there might be additional peaks that are not present in the sample. And uh, by checking this box, we can filter out all these all these results because most likely they are not present in the sample as they have additional peaks. All right, now we have defined all of the settings for the identification tool. To save the settings, click OK. Now we are ready to perform the search. Go to Tools and click Identification tool. Calcmet will now perform the identification routine according to the settings we just defined. All right, the results of the identification routine are displayed in a separate window here. Now we have just one result. It's also displayed on top of the sample spectrum and the residual spectrum, so you can review whether it fits the peaks or not. In this window, you can now see first the library that we are using, then the component that has been identified, and then the heat quality index for the CLS method, and then the heat quality index for the peak match method. Lastly, there is the concentration of the component in PPM. So now the identification tool suggests that there is ethanol and that the concentration of ethanol is 61.66 ppm. Now we can take a look at the results, compare it to our spectrum and see whether it fits. We can look at the residual spectrum and we can zoom in and it seems that the ethanol is actually Pretty good match, like indicated by the heat quality index. You can now add the component to the analysis by right-clicking the component in the identification tool results window and clicking add to analysis. Or you can go to edit analysis settings and select ethanol from the list and add it to analysis. Now ethanol has been added to the analysis and you can see its concentration here. 
Now we can click here to see the updated residual spectrum. Now it seems that there are no clear peaks anymore in the residual spectrum, but just to be sure we can run the identification tool again to make sure that there are no other, other components that we could identify from the sample. So now we are running the identification tool with the same settings that we defined before. This time we don't have any results, which makes sense because the first time we just have the one result, which was ethanol. If we want to, we can also now adjust the heat quality index to see if there are some worse matches that were not included in this search because of the high heat quality index. So now we are performing the search again with updated settings. Now we have some results, but as we can see, the heat quality indexes are not very high. We can click the results to display them on top of the spectra, the sample spectrum and the residual spectrum. Starting with the thiophosgene, we can zoom in and see that this probably isn't a very good match. The shapes are not very similar. We can do the same for the second component, which is hydrogen cyanide. And once again, we can zoom in and see that the shapes are not very similar. Then we can check the worst match, which was chloroacetyl chloride. And once again, we can see that there is one additional peak that's not present in the sample. And then these are somewhat similar, but not, not similar enough for us to decide that there would be chloroacetyl chloride. So I would conclude here that we have here ethanol and nothing else that we could identify from the spectrum. If you accidentally close the identification tool result window, you can reopen it to see the results of the last search by going to view identification tool results. So now you have seen how to use the identification tool in CogMap 14. As a recap, if you have configured your settings, you can then run the identification tool search in less than a minute by clicking tools and identification tool. So you can quickly identify unknown compounds even, even when you are in, in a hurry in the field. You can also use the identification tool later as a post analysis tool whenever you, you want. You just need the sample spectrum of the sample you want to analyze. All in all, the identification tool is a powerful tool that you can use to identify all of the unknown compounds in your sample, whether they are inorganic or organic. If you have any questions or want to know more, you can visit our website or contact your nearest government office or distributor.